What's poppin', y'all? Welcome back to another episode of NBA Weekly. I'm your host, Pee Wee the Plug, and in today's episode, we have to talk about the Eastern Conference Finals, the Western Conference Finals, and the potential NBA Finals matchup that we have, and the question of, are NBA fans ungrateful? Before we dive into that, though, I just want to remind you guys to make sure you hit that like button for me, and if you're new and you enjoy this type of content on a weekly basis, make sure you subscribe. The Western Conference Finals. Not much to unpack here. The Denver Nuggets went into Los Angeles, and they really handled business in four games. They dominated them in every area and aspect of the series. They outscored them. They outassisted them. They outrebounded them. Um, they outshot them from the field, shot better at three. The Denver Nuggets right now are looking like a championship team. Same can be said for the team out east over there in Miami. But, you know, Denver Nuggets have had six guys in double figures in every series throughout the playoffs. And those six have been Jokic, obviously, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, KCP, and Bruce Brown. And I believe for me, when I look at this team right now and how much they're rolling, first and foremost, I'm a little bit torn because on both conference finals matchups, two teams are kind of dominating the series, right? We saw Boston last night win a game, and they're able to now extend that series and go back home and try to take it one game at a time and fight back as much as they can. But Denver, on the other hand, they were able to complete their series in four games. Usually at this point of the season, a selfish NBA fan like myself, I'm looking for seven-game series with a, a game seven that has all the theatrics and dramatics of a, a game-winning shot being made, a game-winning shot being missed to advance to the NBA Finals. I'm looking for that type of action. But at the same time, to see two teams dominate at this point in the season could put us on a collision of two teams at their highest powers colliding to then have a, a slugfest in the NBA Finals, which is our last basketball of the season. So if we're going to get that, I, I probably prefer this route, if I'm being honest. But sticking on the Denver Nuggets, um, they handle business. They made shots timely. They defended well. Anthony Davis came out and had a 40-point performance in game one. That made us come you know, come back to our to our foot film and be like, hmm, OK, can Anthony Davis dominate the series? He didn't have another 30 point game in this entire series uh, after that 40 point match to PC had in game one. LeBron James, he didn't give us a 30 point performance until the last game of the series where it was too late. D'Angelo Russell practically went missing. He went invisible. You had some performances here and there from Rui. You know, Schroeder was trying his best as a defensive matchup or problem for Jamal Murray. And I think, honestly, the guy who stood out the most for me on Los Angeles side has to be Austin Reeves. I think you prioritize him this offseason. I think you empower him more in the next upcoming season. And I think he's a guy who can be a very instrumental piece for this Lakers team over the next few years of transitioning from this – LeBron, Anthony Davis to maybe a LeBron, uh, LeBron passing a torch to AD finally. Maybe you go out and sign a Kyrie Irving. Whatever move you do going forward, you include Austin Reeves in it and you empower him to have a more vital and bigger role next year, in my opinion, because he plays so well off of these guys. And I think if you do bring a Kyrie Irving in, Austin Reeves is still somebody who can get his shit off within the you know environment of the team, complimenting everybody. And he showed... He showed that he's ready for these moments, and I, I think he's earned everything that's coming his way in this offseason. D'Angelo Russell, don't you, you probably can't bring him back if you're L.A. And for him specifically, I'm very curious to see what his market is going to be because he was legitimately non-existent in his series. And unfortunately for him, prior to this, I thought he had a really good, solid playoff run. I thought he stepped up big for them in previous series, like against the Warriors, uh, had some moments against the Grizzlies. But literally in four games, he just wasn't there. He wasn't there at all, couldn't make a shot. Um, and I think it really put Darvin Ham in a position to have to panic. We saw them start Schroeder and D'Angelo Russell. We saw them then sit Schroeder, and then you start Jared Vanderbilt. And then you have Jared Vanderbilt out there, and they feel like he's a negative on offense. So then you take him back out. Uh, and then in the last game, they started Rui Hachimura. Like, the Nuggets really had them panicking and looking for any type of answer. 
And part of that is because the Lakers were still a fairly new team because of the, you know, acquisitions they made around the deadline. But also it's because of the pressure that the Nuggets put on them with all of the options and everything that the Nuggets were hitting them with. Darvin Ham and his team was literally like, we have to try shit. We're at the point where we just have to throw shit at the wall and try it to, to see if anything could work. And that's why I got to give hats off to the Denver Nuggets to be at this point in the season having teams scramble for answers is really impressive for for them and Mike Malone. I also think this is a a wonderful situation because, you know, Jokic was a two-time MVP, won it back-to-back, had a, you know, an opportunity to win back-to-back-to-back, and there was a lot of conversations on how could Jokic win back-to-back-to-back and have three MVPs when this guy hasn't done it, that guy hasn't done it, even LeBron didn't do it, and we gave it to Joel Embiid, and I was okay with it. I was okay with it. It was kind of like a here, fine, get your MVP and B, but he also did have a really, really good year. It is a regular season MVP award. But I remember on my podcast saying, give give the MVP for Joel Embiid. He did have a great year. He did earn it. Fine. But it's also good because now Embiid has to answer stuff. He has to accomplish things, and both of them are now in position at the start of the playoffs to go on runs and to potentially meet in the NBA Finals. And one is either not going to do it or they're both going to flop, and we're now going to be like, oh, Giannis, who nobody predicted that they would lose in the first round. Somebody else is going to regain the, 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 the reins of being that unanimous best player, Steph Curry, anybody. And sure enough, the, the Philadelphia 76ers failed again. They didn't even reach the conference finals. And now we have Jokic as the best player in the NBA doing every single thing, averaging a triple-double, breaking wilt records on his way there, mind you. And it's it's phenomenal. And I think it starts this new conversation about Nikola Jokic being one of the greatest centers of all time and also the best player in the game right now. And I like the conversation because he's different. You know, um, and that's where my conversation of NBA fans being ungrateful being in this video, because everybody right now is talking about the ratings of the NBA finals and how boring it could be. But as a basketball fan, isn't this what we want? Don't we want the best players who are playing the best basketball and being the most dominant? Don't we want them in the NBA finals? Don't we want the best teams to perform there? Isn't that what we want? everybody's kind of stuck on the fact that we won't have a LeBron. We won't have a Steph. We won't have a KD or Devin Booker. But instead, we're potentially going to have a Denver Nugget team and a Miami Heat team who was a play-in team, a play-in team. And everybody's stuck on the fact that there won't be a Giannis Antetokounmpo or Kyrie Irving or, or somebody like that in the NBA Finals. But my argument is, don't we just want the two best teams? Giannis won't be in the finals. Why? Because that play-in team, Miami Heat, beat them. And yeah, Giannis missed a few games. But even in the games Giannis came back in, when they were only down 2-1, the Miami Heat took care of business. They did. The Bucks blew a 16-point lead, a 15-point lead. And in the games that Giannis came back, they didn't win one. Giannis coming back couldn't extend the series at all. He came back. It was 2-1. The series left at 4-1. He couldn't win you one extra game with him being on the floor and being there. So I'm convinced the Miami Heat had their number regardless. And yeah, Giannis being fully healthy could maybe change, but it, the circumstances, the circumstance, the Miami Heat beat them without Giannis and with Giannis, and the Bucks one win came without Giannis in game two. The fact that LeBron James won't be in the NBA Finals, why? It's because the team that's going to be there beat them easily in a four-game sweep. Why won't Kevin Durant and Devin Booker be there? Oh, because the team that's going to be there beat them convincingly in six games. Convincingly. And you look at the entire playoff route, they are they beat the best teams and the people that you want to see. These, these two teams took care of business. The Boston Celtics, it's not over. It's a long shot for sure that they're going to come back from 3-0 because we've never seen it in our in, in ever in history. But technically, it's not over. But the Miami Heat are taking care of them. This is another team who uh, beat the Philadelphia 76ers with the MVP. Um, You know, this is a team that has Jason Tatum, who was just in the 
in the NBA Finals last year. They have Jalen Brown. They have Marcus Smart, Robert Williams, Al Horford, Malcolm Brogdon, Derek White, Grant Williams. They have the star power. They have the supporting pieces. They have depth. They have size. They have three-point shooting. They have all-star appearances. They have the sixth man of the year from this year. They have the defensive player of the year of last year. They also have Robert Williams, who a lot of people thought should have won it. So they basically got like two defensive player of the years on their team. Uh, like, and the Miami Heat are outplaying them. My New York Knicks, you know, the team who took care of the Cavaliers convincingly, the Miami Heat beat the shit out of them. So I can't understand how we're saying this is going to be a low ratings NBA Finals. This is going to be boring. We have two teams who have beat everybody that you want to see, potentially lining up and matching up um, on the biggest stage of our sport, and we're saying it's going to be boring. We we have to stop having these conversations or these wants that are so player specific. NBA fandom is not about your favorite player or your favorite team. And I say that all the time, or not even NBA fandom. There's this thing right now, and I think it's because of social media, where people think their favorite equals the best. And it's just not the case. My favorite team isn't the best team. That's why the Miami Heat, we lost to the better team that's going to potentially play in the NBA Finals, if if my guess is right, with them having a 3-0 lead. That's okay. My favorite player is Paul George. He's not the best. He's just my favorite. Your favorite and the best is two different things. Yeah, we won't see a lot of our favorite players. Uh, I don't know who I, I don't know a lot of people whose favorite player is Nikola Jokic or whose favorite player is Jimmy Butler. Uh, maybe after these postseason runs, maybe we can now get those conversations going where a lot of people are saying, hey, that's my favorite player. I love Jamal Murray. I love this. That's why I love this. We're going to get new names, new faces, you know, new star status guys in the NBA finals on that stage because a lot of our favorites are on their last legs or getting up out of the game. Carmelo just retired yesterday or two days ago. It's It, it hits home. You know, Kevin Durant, Steph, LeBron, these guys are mid-30s now. It's not early 30s anymore. They're mid-30s. We have to start getting used to ushering in new names and new faces to become familiar. Nikola Jokic deserves to be on this stage. James Harden isn't 27 anymore with 40-point triple-doubles in, 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 in the MVP conversation. Russell Westbrook got waived this year and signed um, a, to a minimum for, with the Clippers. It's, it's time to start opening up our minds and ideas of accepting new names and new faces as stars in our league. Jamal Murray has never been an all-star. Never. And he's averaging 30 in the playoff series. <laughs> you know, a lot of people at home have never heard of the name Caleb Martin. He's having huge, tremendous performances. Jimmy Butler has has been a name. People understand him and know him, but he's never been looked at at the light he's going to be looked at now as soon as the Miami Heat go to their finals. Never. And even the bubble where Jimmy Butler – what Jimmy Butler is doing this year, the bubble can't compete with. The fact that there's no Tyler Hero, the fact that they had to take down Giannis in the first round after being a play-in team, that whole circumstance and scenario is entirely different than the bubble. They are a play-in team. To me, that's more exciting than than one-in-one meeting. You have a play-in team make it this far. This is why March Madness has always been more more talked about or more exciting than the NBA because you don't get this type of shit. You don't get Cinderella runs. The Miami Heat right now are a Cinderella team as a play-in team who barely beat the Bulls to get in here, and now they're running through the playoffs and taking care of great opponents, in my opinion. The Bucks, great. The Knicks were great. The Celtics, great. Same thing with, with the Nuggets. The Timberwolves were a great matchup for them. They took care of them. The Suns were supposed to pick Nikola Jokic apart in the pick and roll and just score and score and score. They had a couple games where they did it. They won two games, but the other four, they got their ass ran off, ran off the court. And DeAndre Aiden was a non-fucking factor. Non-factor. Chris Paul, they having questions about his career. Dwight Howard is talking about come play with him over wherever he's at. I forget where, where Dwight is at off the top of my mind. 
Like that's how good, that's how good these teams are playing. That's how good these teams are playing. Monty Williams got fired because the Nuggets did that, did that to them. D'Angelo Russell, I, I don't think he has a market or a value, or, or, or you know, how I don't know how valuable he is on the open market because of the, the Nugget series. The the Boston Celtics handled the 76ers again. Doc Rivers fired. James Harden maybe going to Houston. Boston handled them, and now the Heat are handling them. I don't know what else. I don't know what else we can ask for as NBA fans. I, I'm starting to think we're getting ungrateful. I'm just being. I'm starting to think we're getting ungrateful. And as far as the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat series, to talk about that a little bit, because again, like the Nuggets and Lakers, there's not much to really say. But it's just unbelievable what drive, what heart, and what fight will do for anybody. But if you look at talent for talent, the same way it was against the Knicks, the same way it was against the Bucks, the same way it is now against the Celtics, talent for talent, the Miami Heat aren't there. Max Struess isn't in a, in nowhere near um, a market smart as far as the career he's had as a basketball player, a McDonald's All-American lottery pick. Uh, you, you, nowhere near. Caleb Martin is nowhere near Malcolm Brogdon as a basketball player or a career. Nowhere near. Kyle Lowry at this point, people were saying he should get Miami Heat fans didn't even want him on the team two months ago. Kevin Love was kind of just like, we need anything. We don't have any type of power forward. Let's just bring it. Cleveland didn't even want him. And now all of these guys are outperforming the Malcolm Brogdons, the Derek Whites, the Robert Williams, the Al Horfords. Hell, they're outperforming the Jalen Browns and Jason Tatums. They're outperforming them by simply having more fight. The, the Boston Celtics, I said on a podcast yesterday, they play with this coolness. They have this nonchalant type of beat to them, which, you know, I understand. They th- Those are the type of guys that lead the team. Jason Tatum is a smooth kind of, you know, guy. Same thing with Jalen Brown versus the, on the other hand, Jimmy Butler gets in there, he grinds. He, he's a dirty work guy. He had to earn everything he's gotten. You know what I mean? They have seven undrafted guys. I know a lot of people are tired of hearing that, but when you look at how they play and the fight that they have and the will, and you look at the nonchalantness of the Boston Celtics outside of Marcus Smart, Kind of makes sense. He's a lottery pick. He's a lottery pick. He was a lottery pick. Malcolm Brogdon was the first, uh, uh, not for rookie of the year. You know what I mean? Joe Mazzulla just got his contract extension immediately. And you got the Miami Heat. These guys like, man, we want this shit. All we know is grind. All we know is fight. If we didn't have fight, we wouldn't even be in the league right now. We have to fight just to be on on this team. And you look at the Celtics. I don't want to make it seem like a lot of guys got handed shit because they obviously work to be in the NBA and a B lottery picks, but it's a different hunger. It's a different fight. You know what I mean? They, they, they talk about a story where the fox chases the rabbit. Say the rabbit always gets away. You know why? Because they're fighting for two different things. The fox is just trying to get dinner. The rabbit is running for his life. It's a big difference. If I'm hunting you just so I get, just so I get dinner... Versus you running away from me because you're fighting for your life. It's a way different fight. I'm going to fight with everything I have to stay alive versus you fighting a little bit because to satisfy your hunger at the time. And I, I compare that type of situation or mentality in this. A lot of these he guys are fighting for something. This is this is, this is is the livelihood of Max Struess and the next contract he'll get. or You know what I mean? And how he's going to be perceived. Same thing with Caleb Martin. J. Cole had to make a phone call for Caleb Martin to be on the Miami Heat. You know what I'm saying? So I look at those type of things, and and, and we can go into stats. Obviously, Miami is, is playing incredible defense, giving them different looks. The zone is kind of throwing them off. Obviously, the turnovers from Tatum and Brown um, have been costly. They're, you know, they've had the games where they just can't make a shot. Last night was different. Al Horford made some shots. Marcus Smart made some shots, and obviously Jadim Ta- Jason Tatum drove them home. Um, but throughout the series, defensively, Miami has been there, and they've had timely performances again from from guys 
you know, like a Gabe Vincent, like Max Struess, like Duncan Robinson. It's all timely. Kevin Love, Kyle Lowry. A lot of shit Kyle Lowry brings don't show up on the box score. It's just effort. Like last night when he chased down Robert Williams and fouled him instead of letting him have the two, and he splits at the free throw line. Just effort plays where I just want it more. I'm just hungrier. I, I, I'm just, I just need this. I'm fighting for my life here type shit. So um, I'm prepared for a finals matchup of the Denver Nuggets against the Miami Heat. And I'm not that ungrateful friend, fan. I am ecstatic that we're going to have two teams who have handled their business and have played the juggernauts and beat them or beat the teams who beat the juggernauts and are now positioning themselves to be in the NBA finals. And I'm hoping that that matchup is both of those teams on a collision course that's going to give us that game seven last shot type of feel where you have this offensive sexy team like the the Nuggets versus gritty, grimy Eastern Conference. I'm going to beat you up Miami team, and I just hope it's just that all series. Just just clash and clash and clash and bam and Jokic, Jimmy on Murray. You know what I mean? I Caleb Martin versus Bruce Brown, Max Struess and KCP. Like I'm looking, I'm looking for that type of feel, um, and I'm I'm hoping we get it, and I'm hoping we get our seven game, six game series there, and it's a collision of two juggernaut teams who are on fire at the right time, clicking on all cylinders as far as three point shots, timely shots, timely stops, bench players stepping up, extra depth, the stars doing what they have to do. It, it, to me, it's looking like we're going to have us a, a great one unless the Boston Celtics come back from 3-0 and win that series. If they do that, they're going to be on fire as well, <laughs> and that's going to be a crazy matchup. They'd be extremely exhausted to fight back like that and have to jump right into a series against the Nuggets, but they'd also be so so driven with the momentum that we would have a, a interesting finals matchup there. I'm Pee Wee the Plug. This is NBA Weekly. Y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comments um, about these matchups or about the situation that we potentially can have for the NBA finals. Are you the ungrateful fan? It's like, hey, they're two great teams clicking on all cylinders right now, but I just prefer to see one of the stars. I prefer to see the same stars. I want to keep seeing Kevin Durant. I want to keep seeing the Warriors. I want to keep seeing LeBron James. Or are you open-minded enough and are you ready to usher in the Nikola Jokic's of the world? Are you ready for Anthony Edwards to take another leap? Are you ready for, you know, the Cavaliers with Donovan, Garland, and Mobley, and Allen to take a step next year? Are you prepared for a Jalen Brunson team? You know what I mean? Or are you not as ready as you think you are? Do you really like seeing the same names? Do you want to continue to see all of the names I named before. Y'all let me know in the comments. Let me know how you feel. As always, this is NBA Weekly. I am Pete with a plug, and I will see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.